Hello, welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, Director of Sales for Bone Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. All right, Rob, we don't have any time to dilly-dally here. we got to get right to it, okay? we got a lot of information here. we got to get right to it. Let's get right to it. So, I was at the Cape over the weekend. We did some snorkeling. We did oh. some fit. Is that what you meant? Oh, my God. No, but, uh, if, okay, go ahead, work. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we did some boogie boarding. We did sunrise breakfast. We killed it. We packed a lot of loving into four days. I'll tell you. That's fantastic. Do you believe the picture of that little fish I sent you? The the teeth in that critter? The Pretty teeth. scary. It's a good thing they don't get very big. The teeth on that thing. Mm. Baby bluefish. They look like piranhas. Was, that fish I sent you a picture of was only four inches long. Thank God. So here's how we do it. I snorkel for the oysters. Bum crushes the oysters, catches the little snapper bluefish. Then we put, we rigged the snapper. He rigged it up, and that's what he caught that big striper with. That was a nice fish. It was like a assembly line. Yeah, a, cycle, a circle of life. But it all starts with me and the oysters. Uh-huh. You got to snorkel around. Get them. Very nice. Oh, yeah. We killed yeah. it. That's beautiful. It. That's like a family affair. Well, that way we just don't pay attention to any of the kids. It's just beautiful. It's just us fishing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had, a, we, had, we had a great time. What'd you, get, what'd you do over Labor Day? Anything? Did you get mm, fishing in? No, not really a whole lot. Not really a whole lot. Um, I did go fishing, caught some nice fish, but, uh, uh, Labor Day is a tough one to be out on the lake. There's so many people. Okay. We got a lot to cover today, Rob. And we're going to talk about one of the, I think is one of the toughest parts of being a contractor. And, um, what do you, you, you already know what that is. I wonder if, if our listeners right now are, or 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 would, would guess what this part of the job is. I think it's one of the toughest parts of the job. What do you think? It depends on your business model. Mm -hmm. We're talking about scheduling. Yep. And the more that builders and storefronts and everything start to screw my schedule up, the more I just shied away from them and just stuck to just me and a homeowner. Doing your own thing. Doing our own thing with homeowners. Yeah. Yeah. We found, Pete and I found that worked better for us than than builders and stores well you know scheduling is complicated right i mean it it comes it's filled with a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving pieces and especially if you're doing work around other subs and trades and stuff like that and uh, especially when each task is done by a different trade and the more people that you get involved the more chances of the of the scheduling going south um and who's on the site and all those different type of things come into play I think it's one of the toughest part of the job and it's what would probably keep me up more than anything. Just making sure we were on schedule. Cause I, if I told you I was going to be there, I was going to be there. I mean, literally on one hand, I got to count the amount of times that we were not, um, that we were late to a job. I mean, really less than one hand. Um, and, and, and at the, at great cost to myself, by the way, (laughs) great, uh, uh, personal costs and, family costs and everything else. I worked a lot of weekends to get, make sure I was up on time and blah, blah, blah. So, which I'm not bragging or, 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 um, or, um, recommending. Go ahead. Good. You know what? What are we, this is almost five years we've been doing the show. Yeah, but I'm not bragging. Brag, I, brag a little bit. No. I mean, well, here's the reason why I, I, I don't know if it's a great healthy recipe to uh to work as many weekends as we've worked i hear a lot of people say no it's not it's not necessary you shouldn't have to work weekends and i i see their point 100 percent. i see their point but uh, my point uh, you know um i just you know i had to make sure all my jobs stayed on schedule all the time that way i just couldn't relax unless they were so hey, i'm not say, I'm, I'm, go ahead i'm sorry i'm not saying i was right by any stretch of imagination it is what it it was what it was but um, I think we could talk about that because I th- think there's a lot of things that, that cause scheduling issues. And maybe we can go over some of those. 
And I, I was put down a list of things that I was thinking about. And uh, one of uh, is lack of scheduling knowledge. Whoever does the scheduling, if they, you know, if they think it's going to take, you know, six hours to do a handrail or something like that, you know what I mean? Uh, if they don't, or if they have a, a particular difficult layout and they don't put enough time in there for that layout, uh, I think those, those type of things can cause you issues. Um, or they don't recognize the amount of detail that's involved, especially if there's a lot of handwork with a scraper around certain things and everything. And, um, you know, it's just not straightforward. It's, it's a lot of handwork that, uh, you know, if, if you were not an experienced estimator, you would miss it all together. That's why I think it's so hard for some, some businesses to have estimators that are not really, that haven't been behind a sander for, for 10 years or on, on their knees for a long time doing floors. I'm not saying they can't do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not at all. Some of them are extraordinary. Uh, but I think it does kind of uh, uh, put you a bit of a disadvantage. Well, uh, I got, I got an example for that. <clears throat> when I estimated, it was just really just get the square foot ballpark type of thing and then go off of that. I look at the way my kid does an estimate and I started cracking up. I mean, I really I, I could not believe the difference between how he does it and how I do it. And that uh, that one right there is probably one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was out full time estimating and doing jobs is the inappropriate level of detail. Bum knows every corner, every threshold, every doorway. He counts every, you know, every corner, every closet, radiator pipes, you name it. That is all into his estimate. You know, not just, you know, like I would just say, oh, stairs, you know, 35 bucks a step or whatever. It is unbelievable. And he goes right down the line and he's charging for each one of those things. And I said, that was a young lion teaching the old lion something because I go, that's brilliant. Because I don't know how many times, you know, a lot of the older jobs that we would do, every doorway had a wooden threshold. So yep. you're scraping thresholds, not only corners and everything, but, you know, you got you got eight thresholds that you got to do and, you know, they're coved and all that stuff. So that is a big one. I, re I think that's a really good one is be very detailed in your estimates now. Well, let's look at 90 square feet. If I ask you how, how long would it take you to knock out installing 90 square feet? Oh, pretty, no time, right? No time at all. Right. Okay. Now, now it's 90 square feet in a hallway with six doors in it yeah. with, ex with existing floors in each room. Yes. Yeah. Right? That you got to match up perfectly. So now that 90 square feet is like 800 square feet. Right. I mean, right. there's a lot going on with a lot of custom cuts and everything. A lot of, you know, uh, you know, not getting a chance to get some, a lot of good nailing in where you got to start hand nailing and what have you. And, and, um, and, and to just change the whole complexion of the job. Right. So if you're inexperienced, that, that right there is throwing money out the window. Yeah. I can hear the homeowner now. Hey, it's only 90 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me, let me teach you something there. So, so and I put that as uh, you know, um, inappropriate level of detail. Uh, on the estimate um, or unrealistic scheduling and planning. Uh, but I'll tell you something, Rob, too, is uh, and I think this is a big one, um, an inefficient workflow. You know, making sure you streamline your process and invest in the tools and technology that puts you up for success. Uh, it, it, I'm telling you, it is amazing to me. I, I, I know I say the power drive all the damn time. I know I do, and I apologize. People are probably saying, "Oh, you're going to talk about power drive again," but we do work type, for Mona. No, but it's not even that. I, you know, really, truly, it, I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, when I was a flooring contractor, that one of the biggest shops in town was using was using Hummels. And I talked to the guy, you know, why you use Hamels and whatever. He goes, because I can, I can get a system down pretty quick with these, with these. The guys don't have to learn with a, how to put building paper on like a, like a drum sander. I can, I can make this where they can streamline it. Okay. Makes sense to me. You got a lot of guys out there. And I put the, 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 um, the power drive in that same, same boat. 
look, let's face it. Not on that, lot, not, there's not a lot of people buying machines these days, Sanders, right? But the power drive sales are off the charts. And I, and I think there's a reason for that. So to be able to streamline your process. And I'm amazed at big shops. There's a, some big successful shops that I've been around recently that um, 10, 15, 20 installers. That, you know, I mean, if they, if they didn't have a system and a process, it would be a chaos on a level that I, I think would put you in a, in a nut house. You know what I mean? But when I went in there and I was like, boom, 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 all the table saws lined up, all the nailers lined up, all the compressors lined up, all the fittings are exactly the same. And there's a process you can scale up it's repeatable. And they just come in there and there's a guy that that's his job to organize all these tools and all these vans and stuff. And whatever they pay that guy, it is not, it's not a waste of money. I mean, you're making money from that guy because that is allowing you to streamline a process and make something repeatable and things like that, things like the tools and technology today will allow you now to, to scale up, as I said, and, and, and streamline your process and get into where you, you can start making a lot of money and, and you can make these, these steps that were arduous steps in the past, a lot more labor intensive steps you can just get right past those. I talked about in the podcast, let me just finish the real last point. I talked about the, one of the podcasts in the past that maybe you don't make a lot of money on certain jobs. Well, maybe you could eliminate those jobs. We just don't make money. Or you realize I have to charge double what I was charging. Almost what we call a throw, like a go away price. If they take it fine, if not, well, uh, you don't care. But if, they, if you do get the job, at least you're making the kind of money you wanted to make on a job. There's, you know, you have to, I think, make a decision some, at some point. Do I, am I just, am I a floor guy or am I a business owner? Am I a floor guy that charges for my time and maybe, you know, my, I bill my guy out at $35 an hour or because I'm charged or I'm paying him 20 and I'm billing him out 35 or am I a business and I'm billing out at a hundred bucks an hour? You know what I mean? And I, I think, I think so when working on your business and, you know, look, let's face it, it looks like we're going to start slowing down now, different parts of the country. You already see guys are slowing down. I think it's a good time to uh, maybe start working on your business and start working in your business. And listen, I, I, you know, like I said, Rob and I have no skin in the game. Obviously we're two guys talking and um, you know, so um, take it. One guy, that. one guy talking. True. Yeah. I, I very rarely let you in, but, um, you but really, I, it, 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 it's all because of that last show, huh? Well, you, you talked a lot of that one segment you went, you last went out show. Three, yeah. You went around one three, out of 220 episodes. Yeah. I did some talking, right. You talk, you've talked for maybe four minutes, two, maybe two or three. You talked for four minutes and 27 seconds without <laughs> stopping. So I am, I don't know what came over me. I yeah. apologize for that. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. Yeah, but, but go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. You're going to make a point. I forget exactly what I was going to say. Perfect. But... Uh, as I was saying, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Have you really forgot your point? I Man, I tried to get in a couple of times. I was okay. just listening. Do you know go where ahead. you finished up? Uh, yeah, uh, inefficient workflow and streamlining the process and tools and technology for today. Yeah. Uh, I'll... Well, I think too on what I was going to talk about when you said streamlining the process, you know, the number one cost is your labor, right? I think your number one cost is labor, mm -hmm. cost of the job. I'm shocked how many guys uh, that I see on jobs or in schools that don't take a little time setting up where your sander's going, where your vacuum is, where your cords are. You know, you can take five minutes to set everything up and then work cool and clean right across the floor without stopping and moving and flipping cords and all that stuff. I think that starts to make up. The other thing, too, is I'm a big believer, and I know we sell sandpaper, but, man, you see people just fighting that dull paper. Keep trying to push it a little bit further, a little bit further. If you're doing so much work, rip that piece of paper off, go to a brand new piece of paper. I think you're going to save a ton of time it's definitely worth it yeah 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 good call um you know back in the day when i first started with working with my uncle and i probably every floor man can relate to this 
he was so um, adamant about how he wanted me to roll up the cord. <laughs> right? There's yeah. a certain way you, yes. that 220 cord, there's a certain way that you roll that cord up. And if not, you're going to fight your whole entire career. There's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And so if you train that, that cord, get that cord, you know, where it's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's going to lay out, lay down the way you want it to, man, that's just one small thing. But if not, you're fighting in every job. There's nothing worse than watching a guy fight a cord, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's just, yeah. it's, it's just you better gotta roll to like, You got to be a fireman. Yeah. You can't be, yeah. Fire. You can't be waiting. You yeah. imagine a fireman rolled up cord, rolled up hoses bad. When I talked about having Terrible. a process, I, I talked about when I, I was in way better shape than my uncle. I was way younger than him. I just came out of high school and I was in great shape. And he was in his late fifties at the time. And he ran circles around me installing because every stupid step I was making, I mean, every 10 steps I made, he made one. You know what I mean? I'd put my nail set down. I have to look for it now. I put this down. It's on the other side of the room. He was like a machine. Everything, everything was, you know, methodical and um that process saved him money over over the years of time and what have you over, over the time um you know when we were doing when we were really flying doing you know when the bowling alley days were in their heyday my uncle rarely did a lot of work he rarely did he just he always looked like he was just standing around uh -huh. but all he did was because we probably had Back then, we were running anywhere from six to eight guys with double sets of equipment, and we'd start on each end, and everybody would work to the middle. And all he did was make sure cords were ready, machines were ready, paper were ready. When you got done with doing something, your next step, you you just stepped into it and started going. He was a master. It, people hated him for it because mm -hmm. he never got a break. I mean, yeah. it was just never stop non-stop it was kind of fun but my partner pete one day said when we were doing our own work he goes you know it's really amazing how much we learned from your uncle not about not about how to do floors but the process of how to do it yeah and streamline it and never stop working i go yeah yeah i said yeah we all hated him for it but holy crap i mean now i see why he did it time is money um, when I was in the carpenters union, I, uh, worked with the same company. My father-in-law was a superintendent and, um, uh, hardest guy I ever worked for in my life, bar none, miserable, hard, hardest guy. I've, but, and, and these guys that he had on his jobs, these were massive jobs, freeway overpasses and big, huge jobs. He had the same guys on the job all the time. And they were hard guys, man. And I lost touch with everybody through the years and whatever. And I ran into one of them not long ago. And um, he goes, you know, after we left that company, he goes, you got out of the trade and went to do your thing. And I, he says, I went on to work for other companies. He said, in my entire 30 years since then, I've never been around a crew that was any better than that crew, that, that crew on those jobs right then. Mm -hmm. He goes, it was the most organized, disciplined crew I've ever been around in my entire career. I've never got to that level again. And it's because he was a taskmaster about making everything, uh, you know, a process for everything. And even getting that process down, sometimes you have to take a step back to get that process. You know what I mean? You maybe have to make a jig, which takes you a day. Uh, uh, a table saw sled is a good example. Yes, it takes time to do that. Maybe there's there's times you have to break, you know, take steps back in order to go forward in the right the right manner. Allow yourself time to do that and have the confidence that you're doing the right thing uh, in in doing so. And again, these sleds and everything can be used on, on jobs down the road. A lot of guys make sleds or make certain jigs that they just mark them, they calibrate them, they mark them, they put here's the here's the here's the uh, the uh, the saw blade I use with this particular sled, and here's the angle and everything, and hang on to them. Um, I think there's some other things that can set you up for for failure on scheduling, and one one is unfair scheduling, and honestly. I, I was guilty of, of this at times with my brothers when I would I would put too much on our plate and then I would put the pressure downstream. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think that's, you know, allow some buffer between the jobs is, um, is smart. Um, 
Unexpected absences could wreak havoc on a schedule. That's why young guys, man, in the trade, man, if, if, if I can implore you to do one thing is to be reliable. Show up. Show up. <laughs> Show For, up. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, it, it, it is so damn important. And that you really owe it to, if a guy's putting time into you and he's teaching you a trade, it's a two-way street and you really, really owe it because you, the pressure that these guys are under to get these jobs done and be professional and, and, and get more jobs and keep you working and keep things going. And that way allows you to take vacation time and this, that, and the other, he needs you to be on time and he needs you to be um, reliable as far as not having unexpected absences. It is a killer to a small business. It's an absolute killer. Uh, Cause it's probably the one thing that was just a, break a guy's heart and his soul and probably put a lot of businesses out under just not being able to rely on, on, on helping there on time as, a, as a, I think is when you know, you're, a, you're, you're, you're a man, frankly, uh, a man that can be counted on that has responsibility. That's going to be a good man in life. I really think it is one of the core principles is that you show up when you say you're going to show up and you do what you say you're going to do. Um, so that's the way I look at it. I think another thing you can look at is um, uh, the logistics in the home. Uh, that's people and furniture. You know, um, if, if they say, hey, you can't start till eight o'clock, you have to be done by three because my kids come home from school. Um, that all takes away from your time on a job and that has to be accounted for. So those conversations have to be upfront. Our working time is this. And if I'm going to break this job into two stages, well, now that price completely different because now I have to go back to the job. I have to bring in the machine again, take the machine back out again, move things around again. It's two different situations altogether. So if uh, that needs to be accounted for. You know, when uh, we had talked about doing this show, I think one of the things we were talking about why we were going to do this show was uh, because of what's going on out there. Things seem to be slowing up a little bit. I mean, not the mad rush that we had from before. You know, maybe it seems like it's slowing or just getting back to pre-COVID normalcy. But with the scheduling, now those days are, they're platinum. And, you know, one of the reasons that Pete and I stopped working for builders and stores was it was just the two of us. So when we scheduled a, a week for a job, you know, sand and install and everything, and then we, you know, we got banged out of it. No, we're, we're not ready yet. You know, all of a sudden now we got, yeah, we can go golfing and fishing or we better scramble around and find some recoats or something to do. But after we got nailed a few times, and it, I think in the end it was really my fault because I just wasn't staying on top of people. I was just taking people at their word thinking, here we go, Monday morning the 18th, we're starting this job and then you get there and they're not there. You know, I should have been checking on that job a week ahead of time. I know it's going to be a lot, but coming into where we're coming into, where your time is precious now, and especially smaller crews. You know, if you're one of these guys who's running 10 crews and you got lots of jobs going, yeah, you know, might not hurt as much. But, you know, for the two, two and three man companies, you know, a week off, that's going to kill people. So you have got to stay on your builders and your store owners and everything just to make sure that you're not walking into a, you know, walking into a fire pit. Look what happens when you lose a week on a job. You know what I mean? And, and, and also that goes to why you need to charge what you, what you have to charge. And, you know, you have to cover your, all these hidden costs because as a, as a, somebody working for themselves, um, when something happens unexpected that you lose a week because the homeowner isn't ready, like they said they were going to be or what have you, that's a killer. And it goes right to your profit and your bottom line at the end of the year. So I think that's why when we say you need to charge six bucks, eight bucks, for whatever, I think those things part of, are part of the, of the factor uh, of running a business. You have to, and you need those things. That's why I always say, I never feel guilty when all of a sudden you get to a job and I'm going to throw an example back. This reminds me of the old days. This is how, how old we are. Back in when we used to call engineer floors laminate floors. And you go there to sand the floor and it would sand off with 100 grit. And it's like, 
2,500 square feet. And you think, oh my God, it's just going to be a fantastic day. Wide open day. And we bid it high. You know, maybe there's some things that for some variables, but everything went your direction. Everything went your way. You know what I mean? You need those jobs and you need the charge because there's going to be these jobs when, when someone bails on you, when uh, the scheduling gets screwed up and now you're not able to make money for that week. That's all part of running a business. Um, there's a couple other things. It, a couple things too. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it and we did get jammed up with uh, scheduling when people aren't ready. If I had had a power scrubber, if I had had a power scrubber and really focused on some recoat work, I made it, I might've been able to sprinkle things like that. in, so I wasn't getting destroyed on that. Mm -hmm. There just wasn't power scrubbers available back then, but now, you know, there's a good quick little opportunity out there that might be able to help you when you're getting screwed on your schedule. Yeah. With, uh, especially with, uh, clients that you've had uh, done work for in the past. Um, I think another thing that, that can kill you is a slow decision maker. When you come to a junction in the, in the job and, um, she stopped the job because she doesn't know which way to lay the floor. She can't make up her mind. She can't make her mind what color or whatever. And it just absolutely kills the job. I mean, so those type of things as, as you know, and I'll tell you what, and this goes to, to uh, uh, apprentices too. When you can start anticipating problems and anticipating the next step on a job is so valuable. So being able to get those things out of the way uh, so there's not slow decision makers that slow down your prog- 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 process and progress. Got it, boy. You got that. Thank you. I got there it. It was go. tough. I almost didn't make it wrong. That was Thank a you. tough one. Yeah. Thank you. You just get going, man. You're, you're like on a roller coaster sometimes. Mm, thank you. Um, and I don't think that was a compliment. But the other thing, too, is do I have to pack up my tools every night is a big consideration on, on the cost of the job. If I, am, I in, am I in a safe neighborhood, a really high end neighborhood where, you know what, this is I feel very com- com- comfortable. See, I'm struggling again, Rob. Uh, I'm not even, I'm not even going to go there. Just left me alone to my own devices that time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Screwing yourself. Yeah. You or, do do it. I, or, or do I have to pack up my tools every single night? You know, my, my table saws and my sanders and buffers and all that stuff. You know, I, even that, you know, it has to be factored into the equation. So I think there's a... That was the worst. Yeah, yeah. That was the yeah. That was the worst. We, I hated doing that. There's only one thing worse, and that's coming back to the job and all your stuff is gone. So... Yeah. Well, when we worked in rough neighborhoods like that, if you ever meet Pete, ask him what I used to do. I used to try to hide everything like yeah nobody will ever, nobody will yeah. ever look in this closet yeah they're not gonna look in a closet you can't leave anything out they i want them to look in the house and see nothing so i was the king of trying to hide stuff laying stuff down mm, yeah just so i was so lazy i didn't want to carry all the crap back out to the truck you know what my brother uh doug one time he uh had a great big heavy chain and he chained all of our stuff together one time and would you believe that uh they got the the, the general contractor someone ripped up ripped them off that night took a lot of their tools none of ours got taken the wow. sander was there the, and it was all all chained together you would have to be able to take everything in one shot and they tried but our, our, our stuff was the only stuff that uh, that didn't get stolen. So, uh, yeah. That's cool. a good one. Yeah, we just might have uh, saved somebody's job, man. And we used to we give them our... We just might have saved some heartache there. I like that idea. Chain them up. Yeah. We used to give Doug such a hard time, too, about doing that sometimes. Like, Come on, Doug, let's go, man. Don't worry about that. Let's get out of here. But we stopped doing that. A couple more things real quick. A couple things that can put... This always gives you a, a, an advantage on a job and puts things on your side of the equation uh, and puts you in good graces with the homeowner. Uh, I th- and I think it's important to, to clean as you go. At, at the end of every job, you know, I, I you know, work this into the, your timing on the job, but r- really do clean as you go. And I think to, uh, also to uh, the lack of, lack of communication can erode trust uh, with, a, with a homeowner. So I think it's important that you over communicate the schedule and what's going on and everything. So those, those things can go on right onto your side of the table and, um, and a great positive attitude goes miles, goes miles. And I, I've said this to young guys all the time, 
because I've known it firsthand. You never know who's watching you. You never know. Uh, I, I, there was a time that I, I, I want to hire someone or bring somebody up as a foreman, move somebody up. And um, so in my mind, I'm always evaluating who's going to be the next the guy, the leader, who's going to step up and whatever. But I would never say that. I'm just watching how people handle adversity, how they handle things that could be a negative thing or do they, how, you know, are they, you know, some guys can make a bad situation worse. And some guys can help you power through a bad situation. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. I think, you know, scheduling is tough. It's, it's one of the toughest things, parts of the job, I think. And I think part of it is the more conscientious and the more you care, the, t- the tougher it is. Um, you know, I've seen some people go, hey, what are we supposed <laughs> to do? We can't get there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could never, I could never understand that guy. I wanted to be that guy, but. I, you know, like, I don't want to, just like you were saying, I don't want to sound like I was bragging, but if we had a job starting on Monday and we had to work the weekend to finish up because we didn't do a good job planning on anything, we'd work the weekend. I could not tell somebody, especially when it just got to be us and homeowners and we eliminated builders and stores. All right, well, you know, now, now I have no excuses for scheduling fiascos, you know. The only thing that would slow us down is if we ran into something unexpected. You know, I will say, as you get older, um, um, it's weird. Like when you're young, you know, like you're working all the time. You go, God, I'm working all the time. You know, well, all I ever do is work and whatever. As you get older, somehow some things change. And uh, you don't mind it as much, I think, at least for me. And um, sometimes going to work. You don't work mind working? working? You don't mind working like you did when you was a kid. Like, towards the end of my, of my career, like, I, I used to like going to work on a Saturday. I'm the only one there, and I'm there to coat the floor. So if there's nobody on the job site, I put up, put on a, at the time we didn't have, uh, I just listened to bring my radio or whatever, listen to the radio, put on a nice music that I liked. And let's say I was going to coat the floor, put the final coat on. And it's got nothing to do with scheduling, but it just it just is coming back to me. Uh, I would go there like the last thing in the world I was going there to do was coat the floor. Like the last thing on my mind was coating the floor, because if I if I went there thinking, oh, I got to I'm, I'm going to coat this floor and just got to get this job, job coat and I'm done. Um, I would tend to like want to rush it or I, I you know, whatever. I, oh, I got to do these other things first. Look, all these other things I'm doing first. But if I if I get there, my mindset is the last thing I'm going to care about is coating this floor. Then I'll go through and I'll clean properly. I'll clean everything up. I'll pull the plastic. I'll take my time. I'll get all the thing. I'll do all this stuff. I'll, I'll buff. I'll, I'll vacuum. I'll vacuum thoroughly. I'll do these things. And then I'll coat the floor. It's like you have free time. Yeah. It's yeah. free. Yeah. When when Bum started his business, um, you know, I told the story a hundred times, you know, um, you, hey, he said, can you help me get into the sport business? And I go, nah, you, you don't want to do that. It's, it's, it's a lot. You know, I said, it's a lot. I said, but I will help you be the most expensive guy in our, our area. And he goes, oh, that, you know, why would I do that? And I go, well, I know you like spending time with your kids. I know you like hiking and going outside and doing all that stuff. I said, when you're charging enough money, you'll be able to do that. I go, the guys who are not charged enough money, those are the guys who have to work seven days a week. They're miserable. I go, but remember, and it's funny you said the Saturday coding thing, is something my grandfather told us. Every good, every good guy, every good floor guy, he's going to get up and go coat something on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you got kids, it gets you up and going, right? Yeah. I get a coat on and then I come back and then the rest of the weekend is with the kids and the family and everything. Or what happens if you go out Friday, you're feeling a little under the weather or whatever on Saturday, you're just going to hang out in bed. Yeah. There and blow go. half of the day. Yep. A good floor man is going to get up and go coat something on Saturday morning and then boom, you got the rest of the time off. It's almost like that that's his plan now. It's almost yeah. like that's how it works out for him all the time and i'm like yeah that's that's a regular floor guy we all did it Mm -hmm. because we have no life or hobbies at this stage (laughs) of our life (laughs) all right this has been another episode of on the floor with wayne and rob 
Please stay tuned for another episode.